Mute. Me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good to see you all here on time. Superb. I think I think everyone's here actually today. Um, I've got a full list. I think. One, two, one, two, three. Ah, apart from one person. Let me just take the register very quickly. Right, you need um. Once I take the register, I'm gonna just take it from the, from the list. You'll need a pen and paper or a pencil and paper. Um, so could you get something ready to to write on? Because we're gonna be doing something a bit complex today, um, a calculation, and um, so you just need some um, um equipment. Okay. So let me just um, take the register whilst I get the, whilst you do that. Is Liam okay? Let me just oh, quite a few of you have gone off. What's happened here? Is it me? Oh no, oh no. All right, so um, I've got Louise, I've got Zach, I've got Adam, I've got Zach. I think. Let's make sure, yeah. So, it's Liam Lewis is not here. But right, does anybody know what's happened to Liam Lewis? Liam Williams, so Liam Williams, yeah. Uh, no idea, he's dropped off the face of the planet, I've not heard from him for ages. Yeah, he's, he's got issues, he's, he's going to be in a lot, of, he's going to be a lot difficult thing because there's a lot of, um, he's not going to be able to pass if he keeps it the way he is, unfortunately. Right, what we're going to do is, um, now I've got issues with my teams in terms of files, so I want to try and see if, um, if you can download a file, okay, um, so... It's an example we're gonna we're gonna do today. Um, so I'm gonna just put you on here. Um, to the top up. Ah, it's fine. It's worked. Oh, very good. Because because um, um, my other team's pages, all the Word and PDF, so and um, PowerPoint documents, um, um, they're being disabled or something. The shop is it's not working. So glad yours is actually um, actually no, I should wait a minute. Maybe, maybe not. We've got to go to this week's. Oh, it is yeah. Right, so. The objectives today are to try a TV diagram for a specific scenario, to input a data into a TV diagram, and to calculate X purity values and pressure for a given system, and to use steam and superheated table sufficiently. We're going to try and do that today. It's quite a deep example we're going to give today, but it's going to get, put everything and cement everything together that you've been doing bits here and there. A TV diagram is a temperature um, um, volume diagram, okay? Um, you, you can get um, TS diagrams, which is temperature entropy, TH diagram, temperature, temperature um, enthalpy. You can get PV diagrams, which is pressure and volume. OK, so you get different. Uh, you can get different diagrams, graphs to represent uh, the characteristics of steam. OK, depending on what you're looking for. So we're going to look at TV diagrams because because they're very they're, 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 they are quite popular. OK, and to be honest with you, are looking, they all look very similar. OK. Just a few differences here and there, okay? So, now what we're going to do, we're, we're going to be, um, we're going to have to download these two Word docu a Word document and um, um, a Steam table document, which is the PDF. So, you two, you guys, could, I'm going to give you about a minute to download these two, if that's okay, yeah? 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna go and get um, something to drink. So I've been I've been really busy with um, meetings and stuff. Uh, so I need to get something to drink. So could you just download these? And I would like you to look go go through. Um, there's an example called Solution One of Example One. Just go through it. You're not gonna understand it, but just go through it. Okay. Right, so let me let me open the document as well, okay? Now good. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna just connect you now. Now we'll look, we're going to look at something called a TV diagram. It's a temperature. Um, now, so is it, now there's something called volume and specific volume. There's a difference between the two. Now, specific volume is just a ratio, because if you've got a big tank or you've got a small tank, um, it's going to have a particular ratio of of weight and um, and volume of steam. So, so what we we call that a specific volume, okay? And all you do is you divide. Um, it's just a volume divided by um, uh, the mass, which is which is measured in kilograms. Okay, so so just 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 take that into note. That's why it's meter cubed of of a, of a kilogram. Okay. Um, now what you've got is um, so once the temp once you boil water, for example, okay, you put, you apply what we call sensible. We don't like to use the term boil water. It's like really. Uh, not scientific. When you when you apply sensible heat, okay, to 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 a liquid to a liquid substance, okay, the temperature go you know goes from maybe room temperature it rises until it reaches a saturation point here, which is the boiling point, which we call okay. Then you got saturated liquid. Now then then when it reaches that boiling point, based upon your atmospheric pressure, which is in this case 100 kPa, which is the inter which is the Earth atmospheric pressure. Okay, in, in an open environment, um, that temperature doesn't. If you apply sensible T, it gets to a point where that temperature no longer rises, and that's your saturation point. And that's in this case, it's around 99.97 degrees, which is 100 degrees C. Okay, now as you apply that sensible heat, that apply that same heat. Okay, what's happening is temperature isn't rising. Eventually, what happens is when you get no more st uh, water vapor. Okay, when you get pure gas substance. Okay. It gets to a point where if you keep applying that sensible heat, it goes off the charts, and then when it goes off the charts, the temperature goes from the the standard um, what we call um, um, saturation temperature, okay, which is this here. It goes off the charts to a, to an extreme, the high temperature, and when it goes from that point number five, number four, and goes onwards, we will call that superheat, okay, super, and it becomes called technically speaking superheated steam. OK, so that's what that is here. Now, if you've got, for example, yeah, that's what so that's what we're looking at here. Now, different pressure values, uh, um, atmosphere, different pressure values are going to have different boiling points. So they're going to have different lines. OK, that's what you're going to see in a second. OK, um, so this is your temperature and versus um, specific volume. OK, now here, here's here's some examples here. So this is your room temperature, 100 kilo, roughly 100 kilopascals, okay? 
Um, then you've got one um, um, mega pascals. So this is what the t root saturation temperature should be. That's what it should be. Okay. So these are your saturated vapor points. When it shoots off. Okay. When it starts shooting off at that, at that junction here, you can make a line. If you go to here, that's your line there. So basically what you get is something called a steam curve. This is called a steam curve. You just draw it, you just draw it, okay? You don't have to be very accurate with drawing steam curves if you just try to um, predict a particular model, okay? Um, so this is the idea, it's like a, it's like an end shape, okay? It goes like a hill, goes up and down, okay? Um, so so you, and then you've got your, then it just shows you basically, this is going to be a saturated vapor line. Anything ab above that, what's going to happen, it's going to be in the superheated region area. OK, that's what's the idea behind it. So as soon as it goes higher than that, superheated. So when you get to superheated, uh, all it all it means is for that particular te uh, pressure, the temperature at that point here is higher than the boiling point temperature. That's what it means. Nothing else. OK, doesn't mean anything else. OK, do you all did you all these these tables are standard. Now we're, we're going to calculate different values on this steam curve here based upon the scenario, okay? Now, so I'm going to go to here. Now, there's certain things you've just got to remember in your heads. There's certain things you've got to put in your heads, and you're going to have to refer back to. And um, so, I would suggest you just take a note of this on a piece of paper. I'm going to get the calculations ready, okay? The first is, could you copy down that formula for quality? Copy that down. And could you put VGF equals VG minus VF there? Because you're going to be referring to this rather than finding it up and down. OK, it'll just be in front of you. So just copy that red box. Now, some of you are going to be better at mathematics than me because um, mathematics, I'm okay, but it's not like, you know, I'm not teaching. It's not like one of my major strong points. So some of you might be better at mathematics. And so some of the stuff I go through, you think, oh, yeah, I, I, I know that. So, and, you know, it's just one of them things, okay? Now, so you've got here, that's superb, okay? Now, what you've got is this. Now, we're talking about specific volume, which is, which is a quantity of measure. It's a ratio of volume uh, of a space and the weight of, of a substance um, of liquid within, within that space, okay? So that's called specific, it's a ratio of one divided by the other. That's why it's got um, m cubes divided by um, kg. Kg, it's not weight, by the way, it's called mass, okay? So you might need to take a note of that. We, we're not talking about weight, we're talking about mass. There's a difference between weight and mass because weight um, on something um, is is interchangeable based upon gravity or something. And uh, this is physics. And mass is something which is 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 a weight of an object which is fixed. It's the fixed internal weight of an object. Um, it's the, there's a difference, but the units are similar. Okay, so mass is in kilograms. Okay, so specific volume is is the volume. Okay, three D volume divided by the mass. Now. What you've got here is you've got VF. Now VF is the um, the specific volume at the start, okay, of um, a specific volume at start of boiling point here. And you've got this as soon as it reaches saturated line, okay, um, liquid has a specific volume level. One second, one second. You can't have that in class. Can you have a cup of tea brought to you? Okay. If only you could. Now, 
But can you all hear me for a start? Yeah, just say yeah. 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 Okay, good. Now, VG is a specific volume of of basically vapor when it of liquid, I should say, when it gets to um, this point here, which is just before um, it gets into superheated region here. Okay, so that's VF and that's VG. Now, V is a purity. The more pure the substance, the higher the X factor, the higher the V is going to be greater. The less pure, which is more, more water particles it's going to have in it, what's going to happen is the, the, uh, the V is going to be closer to here. Okay, just, just remember this. So V is, is going to be your purity indicator in this case. Okay, and so that's going to go back and forth according to this line, depending on what you're looking at. And what you can do, you can calculate V at different points what it's going to be. I'm going to show you that in a second, okay? But generally, I mean, you've got um, uh, VG minus... Um, so let let me just go off. So you've got v, v, VFG is VG minus VF. So the difference between here and here, we call it VFG, okay? We call it VFG, difference between here and here, okay? So now... Take a note, if you take a note of that point here in, in red, because I'm going to have to go back to it. I haven't taken a note of it, okay? Now, it's, it's got, this is what we did last week, just a more of a recap, okay? If you've got saturated vapour, it's, it's defined as VG. Saturated liquid defined as VF. So if you've got here, you've got VF, then you've got VFG, you've got VG here, okay? Now, the mixture of the two is, is, def is, is defined as V, okay? Saturated liquid and vapor mixture is defined as V. That's why the total specific volume is a total specific volume of VF plus VG. Okay, that's what that is here. Because okay. that's what that is. It's a mixture. Okay. Um, um, you've got your X. Yeah, there's different ways you can calculate X. You can calculate by mg divided by m. The mass of G, which is at this point. Okay divided by the mass of M, which is at a, at a specific point on here. We're going to come to that in a second. That way you can calculate X. It's, it's a ratio factor. Sometimes it makes sense that and, and, and whatever this line is divided together, then you're going to get a ratio, okay? Like if that V, if that line was all the way to here, you're going to get a ratio of one. So X is going to be one that's going to be pure. Okay, that's the idea behind it, okay? But here you can calculate it by, by, by using mass, or you can calculate it by using volume, both exactly the same. Okay, you're going to get both exactly the same. So, so V minus V F. So is the mass at G and the mass the mass G M G and M F are they the same as V G and V F? Yeah, it's similar. But one, but what is with with, with with one's volume and one's one's mass? Does so that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you see. it's just terminology. But the, but the thing is, you're going to find that it's quite good to have them different formula because sometimes you might have a number for one, not for the other. Then you can do some transportation, the formula. Is there, is, a calculation, the, is there a calculation then for working out M from MG and MF? Is it the exact same formula? So where you've got VGF, would that be M, MGF equals uh, MG minus MF? Yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. There is, it's all, yeah, it's, it's completely correct, yeah. But so... Yeah, there is, there is a specific formula for that. But what we're going to do is we're going to stick to um, this here. X equals V minus VF over VFG. And just remember where VFG equals VG minus VF. Okay? Just just remember that. And that one and that quantity X factor here. So we're going to move on now. Okay? I'm going to move on. I'm going to just fast forward all this. Okay? Now I'm going to give you... Um, we're going to give you a problem. We're going to solve this problem here, okay? When hopefully by the time I finish with you today, you'll have a really good understanding how to read steam tables. Because the purpose of this is basically just to read steam tables and nothing else, okay? And calculate um and using that to calculate um quantities of steam, okay? Uh, different characteristics of steam at different points. So, um, we're gonna just I'm gonna try and get this onto one screen if I possibly can. I'm going to give you about a couple of minutes, okay, just to read it yourself, then we'll go through it, okay? You might not understand it 100%, it's no issue, but just read it so you know what words I'm going to use when I do read it. Oh, wait a minute, is this recorded? 
Did I not record this? No, it's recording. It's recorded. I never recorded it. Somebody else recorded it. Oh, fine. Yeah, it's I, recording. I find it's good. It's good. It's good enough. So, Marge, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, very quiet, okay. So, Marge is a thinker. Quiet people are thinkers. All right, here we go. Now, what you've got here, let's solve this problem here. Now, I'm actually putting you into the deep end, but once I go through this step by step, you will understand. I'm going to make mistakes mathematically because you know, my mathematics, to be honest with you, is not perfect. It's not like amazing. OK, so if it, some of you can correct me if I do make some mathematical mistakes as I go along. But I want to try to explain concepts. So when you understand the concept, you can work it out yourself. OK, um, two, a two kilogram of water at 25 degrees um, are placed in a piston cylinder device under 100 uh, kPa pressure as shown in state one. So what you've got here is you've got a mass, okay, of, now this is not weight, okay, it's mass. So you've got water mass of two, of two, of two kilograms, okay? And it's at ambient temperature, which is around 25 degrees C. And then what you've got, you've got a piston. Now, the, now the pressure of the piston, it, what's pushing down is atmospheric pressure, 100 kPa. Now, in principle, what you do, if you apply heat, uh, Q, which is called Q, okay, if you apply heat to, to, to the water substance, um, uh, because of pressure buildup, okay, because of gases that try to expand, um, obviously the piston is going to go up. That's just a natural thing, okay? That's going to go up, okay? Like for example, if you um, if you place an object in a, in a in a in a in a pan and you pour the pan of water, uh, as a, as a, as the um, object as the water boils, the object tends to float to the top. Because what's happened, the gas is to try to force it to the top, okay? So that's what you've got here. So in an enclosed environment, that works even better, okay? So we're talking. So that first point is just the basic scenario, okay? That's the state uh, this piston is at. So there's no particular um, um, force push, pushing down, but gravity, but um, but atmospheric pressure pushing down onto the piston, and you've got normal room temperature of water. Now heat's being applied, okay? And the, and the mass of that water is two kilograms, okay? So that's what the first part here. Heat is added to the water at constant pressure until the piston reaches the, uh, the stops. And I think it stops at, at the total volume. I think it's just a wording here. Sorry about that, okay? Okay, it stops at the total volume of 0 0.4 meters cubed. So what's happened, heat's, heat's been applied here. Now what you've got here is a volume now the total volume here now is um, 0 0.4 meters cubed. Okay, that's what you've got now. It stopped at that particular point here, so that's the volume, all of this altogether. It's now look at look here. It's not specific volumes, actual volume, which is like three-dimensional space. Okay, so what's happened? The gases have pushed the piston up. It stopped at the stop point here, and and the a certain volume has built up here, a space is built up, and that volume is V2, and that is 0 0.4 meters cubed, okay? Um, so let's just go on state two. More heat is an added at constant volume, okay, until the temperature of the water reaches 300 degrees C. So what's happened now, heat is constantly still applied that piston cannot go any further up because you've got your locks here, your interlocks at the top here. So what's going to happen is the volume isn't going to change now. It's going to remain the same. So as you apply, that all that water is going to completely disappear and all you're going to be left with is gas. Then you're going to reach, okay, as you know, okay, if you look at the steam table here, you're going to reach a saturated vapor line there. What's going to you're going to keep applying the heat and then as, as you get to the saturated vapor line, it's going to go off the charts. It's going to go to superheat. OK, 
and in this case, it's been measured at 300 degrees C. Okay, so let's just read what it says there. Okay, um, more heat is then added at constant volume until the temperature of the water reaches 300 degrees C. That's state three. Now, this is what you've got to do. It's two things we're going to be doing. First of all, we're going to determine the quality of the fluid and the mass of the vapor at state two. And B, the pressure of the fluid at state three. So three, three things we're going to do. We're going to measure X, the X factor, and the mass. Okay. And we're here. And here we're going to measure what the pressure is going to be because the pressure obviously has changed. It's changed quite dramatically. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to try to calculate, first of all, um, the X factor. Well, I call it the X factor. Okay. Which is X, which is a quality. And we're going to calculate uh, the mass as well. Okay. So let's, let's, let's go to here now. Okay. Now this explains to you step by step what to do. So we're going to try and do this if we possibly can. Okay. Always draw a complete diagram of the states and processes of the problem and include all the relevant information in the diagram. In this case, there are three states and two processes, um, constant pressure and constant volume. So it's always good to draw the diagrams as we've done here. Now, if you look here carefully, look at the wording. The wording is really important, okay? Because what it's saying is pressure in two is the same as pressure in one. So these two at the moment have the same amount of pressure. So whatever that pressure is, that's, what, that's going to be that pressure here. Now here, the volume. Now what it's saying, the volume at three is going to be the same as volume as two, because that's, that makes a lot of sense, because the pistons got interlocked at the top. So what's going to happen? You're not going to get an increase in volume. Okay, the volume's going to remain the same. Okay, that's the idea. It's be exactly the same. So the pressure is going to remain the same from that state to that state, but not from this state. From this state, what's going to happen is um, the pressure is going to change. So you're going to have to find P3. Okay, what is P3? Okay, so then what you do is this. So that's your diagram. Study it for about a couple of seconds if you want, and we'll go to the next stage. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Now, next stage, if we go down a bit. In the case of closed system, because it's a closed system, isn't it? OK, like an, a pan, of, like you boil eggs, that's an open system. Now, we use closed systems in order to, to use the um, to use the, the pent up energy of, um, of of the gases from, from water. Uh, we use that to, to uh, and put it into a closed system so we can use it for work, okay? So obviously it's going to be a closed system. In the case of a closed system with a phase um, change fluid, always sketch a TV or a PV diagram indicating all the relevant states and processes of the diagram. As I mentioned above, this diagram will not be drawn to scale. Yeah, I did not mention that. Now these diagrams are not are never to scale. Because what happens is it's actually done according to um, what we call um, oh what's it called now shit I'm oh, sorry um, what what's um, to the power of ten what type of graph is that when you do when you do power of ten exponential or no, logarithmic sorry logarithmic that's it so it's actually a logarithmic scale so what would happen this is so what we do, we use logarithmic scales in order to be able to get the steam curve something visible that we can work with because it is not as simple as as going up and down. If you do it bit by bit, the graph will go on for completely ever. OK, so it's a logarithmic scale. You see, well done. OK, now, um, so what we've got here, as mentioned above, um, the results get how it will help uh, define the problem and the approach solution. In the case of steam, as we determine various values from steam tables, we add these values to the diagram, typically as shown. OK. Now, what do we have here? Have you all got a pen and paper or a pencil and paper? Yeah. 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 Good. Right. Um, 
okay now what i want you to do is is draw is draw just the axis the temperature and 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 and, and the um and the um specific volume and don't draw, draw anything else inside just draw the axis the l nothing else make it quite relatively large not too large because you're going to do some they're not going to get a neat drawing okay just you know a good size half and maybe half an a4 and then um, just um, draw the axis t and v Right, then what I want you to do, now I would like you to start off at this point here, from you know, where, where the axis is crossed, and draw a dark line similar to this, similar to this hill. We're just roughly doing that, we're just roughly doing it. Yeah, this, because yeah, it's, it's just rough, isn't it? This is rough as well, it's just rough. It, but you, you just got to work it out in your head, you know, eventually. It's just rough. Right. The top of the graph here, like um, what we call the peak of the graph, the peak of the mountain, at that specific point is called the critical point. And that's where the characteristic properties of liquid and gas are exactly the same. It's a special type, but it's a certain specific substance that, that's produced. And that's called the critical point. And that's around 367 degrees, 386 degrees. OK, so that's your critical point there. We're not going to be talking about that, you know, so but that's for you just to know. OK. Now we're going to draw the first. If you can use a different color, it'd be probably easier for you. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off at 25 degrees here. So we're going to boil the water. So you're going to draw a line following the following from there. It's going to be a straight line going here to about here. To that point there. Then you're going to draw a line going across. This is called latent heat. Latent heat is where you apply um, sensible um, heat. Um, to an object, and the object remains the same temperature throughout. Okay, so that's your latent heat from there to there. Now stop where it's got the dot here. There's a reason for that. I'll tell you why. Now, if you go back into the diagram, because we're talking about the X factor, so we know we're looking for some kind of what's what is it, what is the X number, so we know what's going to happen is this, um, it's going to go from here to here at a specific point along here. Okay, we're not quite sure 100 percent the exact value of the specific volume, but a specific volume is going to jump from there to there, because what you've got is v, the volume of two is the same as volume of three, but what's happened? The temperature changes instead. You get a huge change in temperature. So the volume is the same, but the temperature just shoots up. OK, so we're going to find out what specific volume of temperature. Um, volume is the temperature going to shoot all the way to 300 degrees C. That's what we're going to try and find out. OK, and that's what we the purpose. I think the exercise is OK now. Um, so. You've got that. Now, because the volume is, is the same, so we know you're going to go up. OK, so now you can draw another line. In this case, it's blue, just a bit above. The same as you, you did the blue line here. Just draw the other blue line as well. So now that's going to be your new temperature, because what's going to happen when it changes from two to three, it's going to go jump to a new pressure value. We've been asked to calculate that pressure. We know the temperature. 
but we don't know the pressure. All right, what you've got now is this. Now, I've got here some numbers. Where did I get these numbers from? Anyone know? Good question. Good question. Good question. That's super. That's a really good question. Okay. Oh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you where where I got these from. Okay. Um. Okay. So we're going to go to Steam tables now. Okay. Uh, did you download a word and and um and uh, and an Adobe file? Yeah. From Teams. Yeah. Did you download that? Yeah. Mm. It's a title called Steam Tables. The most boring thing in the entire world. Okay. Now, what you've got here is this. Now, we're looking at um, saturation, which is the boiling temperature here, 100 degrees. Okay, it's there. That's your kid. That's your. That's your. Um, can you all see what I'm doing, everyone? Yeah. Oh no, you can't because you can't. Sorry, I do apologize. This is the thing with team. Uh, wait, it's my fault. I'm gonna take away this. Get off this. Can you see? I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on Steam tables. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. So what we're doing is this. Now. First of all, we're looking at the, the boiling temperature. The boiling temperature 100 degrees C, as we've already determined, okay? Because it's it's at basically atmospheric pressure for stage one and stage two. Now, that's, it gives you here the specific volumes of saturated liquid and saturated vapor. So in an enclosed environment, the specific ratio, the specific volume which is now ratio um, between um, dimension and mass, okay, of the what we call um, the VF, which is the um, saturated liquid line, is this 0 0.001044 meters cubed per kilogram. Now, the saturated uh, it, the vapor. The specific volume of saturated vapor, okay, is going to be 1.6729. Take a note of the numbers. Now, listen to me carefully, okay? All steam graphs are not the same because they're all made by different companies. So when they do experimentation, okay, they have different environmental factors. Um, like you will have steam graphs from the UK. They might have different, slightly different variables, from maybe from something from Europe or something from America or something from maybe from Asia, okay? Um, so it, the they all the they're, they're all to be honest, they're all the same, but there might be a, a little, little digit difference here and there. Okay, so, so we've, is, we've the, got, is, is the rotation across the top then the same because they all look like different yeah, uh, rotations? Is, what we've got? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe it would they use this particular steam table? Okay, the the the, the titles are, are the correct. Um, the 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 general formats are correct, but these small numbers here. There might be a small difference in the last digit, for example. You get what I'm trying to say. Okay. I just mean, I just mean the title across the top, because obviously, how are we meant to know what's VF or what's MF or anything yeah. like that? Because you've got. I know. I'm, 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 I'm going to go through this with you now. So I'm trying to do. Okay. So what you've got here, now that one here, this one, is the um, the specific volume of the saturated liquid, that V1, and this one here. Then now, uh, you talk about the titles, isn't it? Yeah. Now this one here is a specific volume of the saturated vapor. Now the problem that we have with steam turbos is this: is the titles at the top, they don't make any sense. Some of them do, the simplistic ones, the ones that, which are user friendly. These are designed for engineers. They're not designed for like um, the average person. So these sim, this this symbol in here for a person who's an engineer. Who works with turbines? Who works with um, steam a lot? They know what these these uh, definitions are quite clearly. So I'm just here to explain to you because there's different ways you can uh, interpret them. 
And um, so this is the more of a standard one here, okay? So this one is, is saturated liquid, that's saturated vapor, these two columns, okay? So at 100 degrees, this one is 0 0.00104 and 1.6729 at, at a um, saturated va um, vapor. So if you go back to your um, Word document here, Sorry, I'm going to switch over. Can you see the numbers there? 0 0.001 and 1.694. So these are, this is, this is from the steam table, these numbers. So now we've got VF, we've got VG, the boundaries. So, so the specific volume here is that. So where, have you took, there. Sorry, where, have you took, where have you took VF and VG from? 25 degrees. Um, no, no, it's because if you look here, it's 100 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, because that's when it when it starts to boil. That's when it's and and um, here is when it starts to turn to superheat here. So if you look so at the latest, green line, the, it's 100, 100 the degrees. Green lines are pointing to them pressures then. Yeah, that's it's a hundred degrees line. Yeah, that makes sense. If you go back into if you go back into there, yeah. if you go back into the steam table, uh, very quickly. It's there, that 100 degree. And we've taken um, the second, the third and the fourth column numbers there. Because pressure is being given to you. And, the, uh, and the, it's saying at this, at, this, at this pressure, the boiling point is 100 degrees C. And uh, as it starts to boil, that should be the specific volume. And as it, charge, as it starts to change in the superheat just before, it, that should be the specific volume, 1.6729. That's what it's trying to say, nothing else. But the, the digits are slightly different, but they're more or less the same. Does that make sense, everyone, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's go back yeah. now. So is it slightly different because you got it from a different steam table? Or? Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got it from a different steam table. I told you they're all different, okay? So you just got to get used to that, okay? You can round off the numbers, you can, then you can get more and more of the same. But that's basically what it is, okay? So now you've got your VF and you've got your VG. <laughs> so now you've got quite a lot of information here, okay? You've not got um, what the the, the, um, the what quality here, quality is. You've not got what V2 is, okay? Um, well, actually, you, now this is where you've got to be very careful now. We know what the volume is, but we're not just concerned with the volume. We're concerned with the specific volume, which is the ratio of the volume to, to, to mass. OK, so this is very easy to work out, this part here. It's just dividing. OK, what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the next point here now. It'll make a bit more sense. OK, hopefully this made sense anyway. OK, but let's go to this point. Now, V2, I'm going to highlight this now for you, OK? It's volume because it's specific volume, okay? So it's a ratio. It's a volume div divided by the mass. So we know the volume of the second container is 0 0.4 meter meters cubed. And we know the mass of the original liquid was two kilograms. So if you, if you divide it together, um, the V2 is going to be 0 0.2 meters, meters cubed per, kilo per kilogram. Does that make sense, everybody? Just, just divide it, that's all you're doing. So now we've got what we call um, V2. So V2 here, okay, is 0 0.2 m cubed kilogram. You're just dividing, that's all you're doing. This is how you work it out, okay? So now you know, okay? Any questions so far? Now what we're going to do now, it says here, so we've got the, um, we've got the mass, which is there. We're going to now work out um, the quality factor X2. OK, so let's work out the quality factor. Now, if you remember from the equation I should write down, quality equals V2 minus VF. OK, over VG minus VF. Now, what's V2? We go back to here. It's V, OK. So what we've done, we've calculated V2, we calculated the V here. That's what we've done. We calculated the V, this point here. 
Okay, so so I'm going back. So it's basically if you put everything into the equation now from the um, from the steam table um, numbers and from the V that you've calculated, which we've called V2, okay, you're going to get a quality of 0 0.118. And you can put that into the equation yourself. Now, just a little recap. Now, when you get from that stage to this stage, when you get to this stage, you're going to get imp you've got impurities because you've got liquid and you've got gases combined. So therefore, the X factor is not going to be one. At that point here, the X factor is one. Just before that point here, the X factor actually is one. But here, because you've got impurities, and remember in steam, any water particles are impurities. Pure steam, which is the pure gas, is is not is is it's pure. There's no impurities. So what you've been asked to do is calculate what the what the impurity level is, what the X factor is here, because you've got liquid and you've got some gases there as well. Okay, so that's what you've been asked to calculate what the X is, and so the, and so basically this is this is um how, how you how you do it. Okay, because now you've got what the volume what the volume is going to be, what the mass is. Okay, the specific mass is. You can calculate the rest. It's all like ma logic behind it. It's all mathematical logic behind it. It's all proportional of ratio. So all it is, nothing else. But do you understand how we got the number here, 0 0.118? Are you all okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? Good. So now, mass of water vapor, okay? So it's asking, what is the mass of the water vapor? Now, X equals mg over m. Okay. Now mg, okay. If you if you transpose the formula, okay, what 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 have you got? Okay, you've got the mass of water vapor is called mg. So mg is a mass of water vapor. Okay, that's mg. So what you've got is um, so it's going to be. So if you look at your graph here. about that point here okay so if you go back to, we'll go back down to here mass of water vapor is going to be mg equals x times m now you've got x which is 0 0.118 you've got your mass okay which is two kilograms we times them together mass of vo vo water vapor at stage at state two is 0 0.235 um, grams so what we're saying is, at this stage here, the mass or the weight—it's not weight—is not a good word to use, but the mass of the water vapor there, because you know, um, gases are more lighter than liquid generally. Okay, so you've got here it's going to be 0 0.235 grams. Okay, that's what you've got, because you know your X factor, you know your total mass. So all you're trying to do is times the x factor with the total mass so it's the total mass times the impurity and then you're going to get your ma then you're going to get your mass of water vapor do you all understand that yeah yeah now this is where it gets a bit tricky because the, the part a has been done part a is because you've got x2 and then you you've got your mg you've got your mass of water vapor so what you've done now, you, you've done you've done part part A. Sorry, we're gonna have to do part two now. Now part two is a bit more tricky. Um, you're gonna use steam steam table, so you need to just bear with me, okay? I'm gonna have to switch screens back and forth. Now look carefully, okay? Listen to me carefully. Now if you look at this diagram here, I've gone into the superheated region, haven't I? Can you see that? Now the question is, how do I even know it's in a superheated region? Why can't it be within this region here? Does that make sense? Why did I presume I'm going to have to go into the superheated region? 
Now, it's because I knew the answer to this before, but the but sometimes you got to just predict things um, logically. It's all to do with logic. Now look carefully. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the uh, super. I'm gonna go back to the steam tables. If you pretend that red line is not in a superheated region, it's within uh, the, the is within the mountain. Okay, you're no longer gonna use superheat uh, tables. You're gonna use normal steam tables. Am I correct? Yeah. Now look carefully. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, because there's two tables. There's a steam table. There's something called a superheated table, which we're not looked at yet. So just pretend we're looking at just steam tables. So now, anything under the line is a normal steam table, and anything over the black line is a superheated steam table. Very good, excellent. Okay, but I'm presuming that it's going over the black line, and I presume it's gone into the no-go area here. Why have I done that? For a very logical reason. Now, if if you were to put this line anywhere here, let's go back to the steam tables. 300 degrees, and when it reaches to 300 degrees, let's go back to the steam table. Sorry, uh, I thought I had it. Wait, one second. Now, these are your steam tables. All this is steam tables. The first, like 90% of the first pages are steam tables. Now, if you look at 300 degrees, what's the volume? 0 0.01267, am I correct? The highest volume is going to be 0 0.2167. Uh, Forget the pressure for the time being, but the highest volume is going to be that. But the thing is, our volume is a lot higher than that. So we know it's, got, it's going into the soup. Can we just automatically presume if our volume is a lot higher than that specific volume, then that means it's automatically gone to the superheated re region. It's just logic. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. So because because our vol our volume is zero point four, it's way above zero point zero two. We know three hundred degrees that it's going to be superheated. Yeah, it's you know it's going to be off the charts. It's going to go to the next stage. You can, you can just presume that automatically. If our specific volume was like zero point two three, then you can say oh, it hasn't got into the superheated area. It's stayed within the line of the graph, within within the mountain of the graph. Do you understand? But it's 10 times the difference, so obviously it's gone off the graph completely. That's so why... Are you on the standard team, team table here, then? This isn't the superheated one. I'm not. Now, you see, that's what I'm saying. I'm using standard steam tables, because if, if, if it's within the mountain, you've got to use standard steam tables. Now, the volume according to this should be 0 0.2167. But my volume, specific volume, is 0 0.2. So I know now that I can't be looking at standard steam tables now. I need to go to superheated area automatically because it's just too, it's such a huge difference. That's why I've gone out into the superheated area automatically, okay? So I'm just gonna go off this. Well, I went to the bottom of this PDF and there is a superheated table at the bottom of this. Yeah, there is, yeah, there is. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna go to superheated in a second, okay? Because we need that to answer the rest of the question. One second. Sorry, I need to just keep sharing screens. Now, here we go. So now we all, now we know. Okay, I need to go to the superheated region area. Okay, that's what I need to do. Now, so we need to go to yeah yes. Oh, Mariam. Oh, sorry. One second. Right. So to calculate now, any characteristics of this, like the, the pressure value, we need to go to superheated steam tables. We can't be using normal steam tables. So let's go to superheated steam tables. Let's find what the pressure is, okay? So superheated vapor tables at 300 degrees C, because that temperature now has reached 300 degrees C. It's in a superheated area, so we can calculate the pressure very easily, okay? So 
Let's now go to the superheated tables. Um, you might need to take a note of this on a piece of paper, okay? Um, so let's... One second, I'm going to switch switching screens. Wait, one second. Um, so it's going to be 1.2, 1.4, and 2, 1.2, 1.4, 3, okay, V3 is 0 0.2. One second. Right. What we've got uh, before I go any further, okay. Now the volume of V3. So I need to just go back. I forgot to mention something to you because this is going to confuse you a bit. Now, if you remember the volume for these two are exactly the same because of that uh, interlock here. So V3 is going to be V2. So you can presume if that's 0 0.2 meters, meters cubed per kilogram. That's 0 0.2 meters cubed per kilogram. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. So what we can do, we can plot a graph. OK, now so we can say um, V3 is 0 0.2, um, 0 0.2. And, but what's the pressure at that, at that point here? So let's go to the superheated tables now. OK, this is the part which is a bit um, tricky now. Just bear with me. So I'm going to keep now if you go down to your to your table, you're gonna see something called superheated. Don't go all the way down because that's subcooled, which is lower than boiling point. We're gonna go a bit up superheated. Superheated. There you go. Now, now listen carefully. Okay, this is the this is all now based upon logic. Okay. Now what we've got here is we know the volume in V three is and V two is zero point two. Am I correct? Do you all understand that, everyone? Are you all clear with that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. So you've got to find the closest volume to that temperature, which is 300 degrees C. And then you can find the pressure. You've got different pressure values here. So, like, for example, if I go to 300 here, now that volume is nowhere near. That's 0 0.4347. That's nowhere near 0 0.2. That one is 0 0.32. That's nowhere near. That's nowhere near that one there. So wait a minute. 0 0.2138 at pressure 1.2 MP uh, megapascals. And then you've got one second. 300 0 0.18228. So between these two pressures, you're gonna get you're gonna get roughly around 0 0.2 at 300 degrees C. Do you all understand that? So we're using our volume value to get the pressure. That's correct. And because you can't get a steam table for every single value in the world, otherwise steam tables will go on forever. OK, and that's just ridiculous. OK, so we just use generally easy to work with pressures, you know, with simple numbers. We give the values and you've got to work out the number in between. OK, so. So roughly we're talking about um, a 1.2 uh, MPA. That's the volume. 1.4 MPA, that's the volume here. OK, so something between these two numbers here. Now, does that make sense, everybody? So is it the closest? Yeah, they're the closest. That's like, it's like a range between there. Well, which one is it? Do you pick a particular one? Oh, good question. Now, this is where the mathematics comes into it, OK? And so this is the interesting part. Now take a note of their numbers now on the piece of paper. Take a note of 0 0.2138 V and 0 0.18228 V. 
V. Just, just take a note. Now take a note of the pressure. So 0 0.18228 pressure equals 1.4 MPA. At 0 0.21382 pressure equals 1.2 MPA. Very important to take a note of the pressure with that volume it should be. Okay. Let's give you a couple of seconds to do that. Now, I don't need to go on steam tables now again, so I'm going to get off this. Okay, do you all understand what I did so far? Yeah. Okay, so I don't need to use any more tables now, because I've got a range. I'm going to work out what the exact number is in between, okay? So this is how you do it. Now, First of all, oh sorry, I, I have not shared it. I'm not shared it. Sorry. First of all, I can make a simple table with VMP. So we're at a one two one point two MPA. That's going to be the volume. We're now at one point four MPA. That's the volume. Okay. In between is zero point two. What's the pressure going to be? Do you understand what I've done here, everyone? I've just put it into a very simple table. Are you all okay with that, yeah? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, you can just guess, okay, but that's impossible to guess the exact pressure. And sometimes you need to get the pressure quite accurate, okay? And we use something called interpolation. Has anybody ever heard of interpolation technique yeah. in mathematics? Yeah. Linear interpolation. Yeah, this is. So let me just um, go for what it is. Because this is now just a simple math. Not simple, but it is mathematics, which you're going to be looking at. And I've got the equation here because I keep forgetting the formula for it because I'm not. It's not my like strong point. OK, call it here. Got a if I don't want to, I've got like a little app that I have on my laptop that you can use for interpolation. Just let me know. And I'll send you. Pardon? It's not like a little app that I use on my, uh, it's like a little application. You can do interpolation with it, it's a calculator basically. Yes. Yeah. That's, so oh, that's, okay, cool. That's... See if I can send it on here. All right, so I, I'm going to switch now. I'm going to switch on to Paint, Microsoft Paint, okay? So just bear with me. <laughs> Sorry. Too many things. Open at one time. So I'm going to switch into Microsoft Paint in a second, right now. Um, wait one second. Right, can you see that I'm on paint? Yeah? Yep. Yep. Interpolation. Now my rough drawing isn't very good on paint, okay? Hopefully you'll understand what I'm trying to do. This is your pressure. This is your specific volume. Okay. I'll put you your... a PV diagram. Okay. Are you doing a PV diagram? Yeah. yeah, to an extent. It's just of the, of the values from the table that I made. I'm just doing that. Do you know that values on that table I just made? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm putting the values in on the graph. That's why I'm doing nothing else. Okay. Yeah. So is it a pressure now, volume now, diagram though? Is it? Is it it's, it's not. It's not a standard PV value. No, it's just a. It's just a graph based upon the, the table results. Okay. Now what you've got here is this. Now you've got y two y one. Then you've got here x two 
x1 okay then this goes from there to there okay now this is the, it's the, this this is natural mathematical concept compared to anything else okay now what you're trying to do is find out what y is that's going to be your pressure got here your x now there's a formula to work out what y is in this case y is going to be your pressure okay so this is so you put your, your your table results onto here, okay? You don't have to physically do a graph. The graph is just like a representation of what we're trying to do. So there's a mathematical formula to work out why. When you've got two ranges and you've got all the factors, okay, given to you, you can work out what y this this factor here, that y is in the middle here. You can mathematically you can work it out. And that's called the interpolation technique, okay? Now the way it works out is this y minus x minus x1 over x2 minus x1 equals y minus y1 over x2 2 minus okay uh, so i think my x's and y's look exactly the same don't they that's one that's x these are y's okay that's an that's, that's deliberate that x there okay so what you're trying to do you're trying to find out what y is so is that x2 and y1 sorry at the bottom x2 yeah, minus x2, y1 uh, take away y1 that's correct okay so what you've got you've got your x take away x1 so you've got your x which is 0 0.2 got your x1 which was um i think it was 0 0.23 something you've got your x2 which is like 0 0.18 minus x1 which is 0 0.2 something something okay then you've got your y value that's your missing number so y1 is going to be uh, 1.2. X2 is going to be um, going to be 0 0.18 something. And y1 here is obviously, as we know, is going to be 1 point. Um, 1 point, what is it? 1 point, um, uh, 1 1.2 or something. OK, that's the idea behind it. OK, now if, if so I missed out. You only need one of the values. Yeah. You don't need both um, for, for 1.2 megapascals and 1.4. You don't need the other volumes. You only need one of the columns. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Sorry, I do apologise, yeah? That should be Y2. That whoever, whoever, I think some of you were a bit confused about that, but yeah, that should be Y2. Because you've got your X's on the Y's on the opposite sides, and you're going to interpolate between them two. I'm, going to, I'm just going to delete that. Does that make sense now more, yeah? I think a lot of you are confused with that. Now, the, the way it works out mathematically is this. Y equals Y1 plus X Take away X one. Uh, sorry, that's X one. Okay. Times Y two minus Y one over X two. Take away x one. Oh, so flipping it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Too demented. It's x one. Yeah. Anyway, so it looks like a y now. That's x one. Okay. 
Oh, sorry about that. I can't be bothered changing it. But anyway, so what you've got here, you can actually. So if you int if you um, transpose from the table the formula, the numbers in into this into this expression here, you're going to get your you're going to get your y value, which is going in this case is going to be your p. Now you can just do this yourself mathematically. You can go to the internet and find out the interpolation calculation because it's a fixed calculation. It's nothing like new that I've invented. It's actually a fixed standard calculation. Okay, so I'm going to just um, go back into the screen. So I've put everything into here. So therefore, you get you get your y value, which is in this case, because it's because either this is MPA, um, you put MPA at the end, so it's 1.29. So you can put that now in there. So now that is 1.29. That pressure line there is 1.29 megapascals. Does that make sense, people? Yeah. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what, so what, you, what I've done basically, I've calculated yeah. the pressure inside there. The pressure inside there, P3, is, is 1.29 megapascals. So what's the 0 0.440 then? Is that once you've, on the, at the end of that, that calculation, the calculation, well, the 0.440, at the end of that calculation that you've just done, down. So at the end of that one, where you've just got your answer of 1.29, what's the 0 0.44? Now, what you've got here is, if you um, if you just do this part of the formula, you're going to get 0 0.440, okay? Yes, but forget that. Yeah, right. yeah, just forget that. Just put the numbers in, you're going to get 1.29. Okay, now, any questions, anyone? I worked it and it works out exactly that number. So, um, so, so anyway, so what have you learned today? So you've learned basically to take a scenario, okay, make um, a TV diagram from, from, from a scenario and calculate a certain key points based upon what the questions are asking you to do. If you learn how to basically use steam tables as well, okay, I think that's really good, don't you think? Yeah, top lesson that will. Yeah. Now, um, I need to give you your assignment soon, and the assignment. You don't, you don't have to. I don't have to. I know I don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to. Now, I'll give it to you after the holidays, okay? The only thing we need to do now is something called the ranking cycle. Ranking cycle. Ranking cycle, yeah. <laughs> you might have heard of it before. Um, it's basically a turbine system, how it works at different pressure points. There's a something called the Carnot cycle, ranking cycle. Um, so it's very simple, you can do it in one lesson. Then Now there's a calculation on the assignment. This, the assignment calculation isn't that, it's a lot easier than that. It's, this is just me going a bit higher. OK, in terms of um, giving you knowledge, OK, but um, the, the assignment's a lot easier, the calculation. It's nothing, anything, anything like that. It's like we, what we did last time, the simple calculation we did last lesson, OK? But when we get to it, we'll get to it. OK, so we'll end it there. And um, hopefully I didn't blow your brains up, OK, too much. And so I'll see you until next time. Have a good holiday, yeah? Cheers. See ya. Bye.